I decided to teach because I really want to make a difference in, in children's lives. I know a lot of adults will say kids never know when they're ready. Learners don't want our opinion. I don't think a lot of learners take the subject seriously. I was taught that sex gives you AIDS. I knew that sex was a bad thing to do. We grew up knowing it is taboo to talk about it. We were a bit shy to hold each other's hand or to kiss each other. A teacher needs to remember that this child needs support. Ever heard of being blessed? Well, a few years ago, people would have said that being blessed is a good thing. But today, being blessed is considered a transaction where sex is the currency used by some people to buy themselves airtime, food, new clothes, hairdos, nails, and sometimes even overseas trips. Don't be fooled. The cost of a blessed relationship bears massive negative implications for young people. The drawbacks leave young people with very little room to negotiate safe sex, putting them at risk of contracting HIV and other sexually transmitted diseases. I'm Dino Ranaga. Welcome to Breaking the Silence. Today we talk about transactional sex and the consequences of engaging in a relationship of this nature. Our expert today is Dr. Tlaleng Mufugeng, who specializes in youth sexuality and reproductive education. She'll be seated backstage alongside our panel of educators. I am Mawili Tefu. I'm an educator. I teach life orientation. My name is Mokhadi Sipuru. I teach LO. My name is Nchani Nkosi, and my mission as an LO teacher is to create a talking Generation. Today, our panel of learners are Sharon, Mpo, Aurelio, Mpo, Keanu, Gadlejo. Welcome to Breaking the Silence. Thank you very much for your time. How are you feeling? Awesome. Oh, yes. Feeling good? Yeah. Feeling comfortable? Yes. Awesome. Yeah. 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 Fantastic. Yeah. So I hope you trust me with your opinions because I'm about to trust you with my space as well and my opinions as well. Uh, I found an insert for us to watch. Today we're discussing blessers and blessees. Let's take a look. As a young girl, we want to look good. We want to stand out. We want the iPhone. We want anything that will somehow enhance our looks. When I got a blesser, I was 17 years old. I didn't find my blesser attractive for a second at all. He was a man who was in his 40s, had a weird beard going on. He wasn't the guy that I would have wanted to go to prom with. <laughs> I was going to boarding school. My family had just literally lost hope in me completing my education. Here comes this man who came to my rescue. He made arrangements that I get to school. On top of that, gave the driver money to give me when I get there. There was no conversation that explained how the relationship was going to go or whether he wanted me to be his girlfriend or not. It was almost like we both knew that he would be in that position to provide and I would just receive. I received 100 rand a time. And a week after that, it was staying in a hotel somewhere. And it was quite obvious that was, there was supposed to be sexual activity. I think also on my side, I felt like here's this person who's given so much. I only owe him. Sure. How does that make you feel? Oh, oh it's disappointing, eh? Like, I don't have any words for what I just saw. I actually now. don't know how I feel right now. Mm -hmm. Hey. It's so sad. Yeah, it's quite disturbing. Because mm. I'm thinking as a parent, I'll be concerned. I'll be like, what could I have done to protect my child from this? Is my not having money led to this situation? You see, people focus on what the girls do, but they don't focus on the things the man does to attract the girl to do those things. Mm -hmm. So as people, ma'am, I think it's a two-way street and it may not be fair, but I guess it's life at the end of the day. So Zandi talks about the need to have nice things. She wants the fancy phone, she wants the nice hair, the nice nails. 
What's this pressure to have all these nice things at this age? Friends. Honestly, I would say it's a thing of popularity. Mm -hmm. It's more of trying to fit in in society. So you don't get left out in a way. Now we have social media platforms like Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Twitter. Like yes. you can maybe uh, a certain celebrity post a picture holding a, an iPhone, wearing a Gucci hat because your parents can't afford to buy you those things. So you mm. end up going for people like blessings and stuff. There's an element of sex here. Mm. So you want the nice things, but the nice things and sex, how do those two things come together? It's a way of paying your blesser for buying you the nice things and stuff. And it all connects to peer pressure, uh, social media and all those type of things. Mm. And it also goes back to the background to your background, how your family is supporting you and all those kind of things. Mm -hmm. If you're like, a, you're having a relationship with your boyfriend, it's something different because like, if you're not ready to have sex, you'd be like, okay, I'm not cool to have sex with you at this moment. Or maybe you'd be like, okay, it's fine. We can have sex, it's cool. So with a blesser, yeah, it's obvious that in return, he'll want something else. And it does, your opinion doesn't matter whether you're ready or not. Because like he gives you all the nice things and you have to give something back in, in return. return. So it's like give and you'll receive. What happened to part-time oh, jobs? <laughs> hey, what happened that's to that getting hey, part-time jobs? Now. Weekends, you have a part-time job, you're a repair mm -hmm. car, mm -hmm. check us. Or the problem is the choosing. This thing is all about like prostitution because you give and you get. Mm -hmm. So that's what prostitutes do. They give and they get money. Mm -hmm. So it's more or less the same. Yeah, Is sex but the only way? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, let me not interrupt add you. something, though? Yeah. Like, transactional sex isn't always a bad thing. I'm going to give you a scenario. Mm -hmm. Say, single mother, age 14, teenage pregnancy-wise now. No parents, no one to support you or your child. What would be going through your mind? You have no education. You have no means of income. What would you resort to as a female? I'm not saying that all females would do it, but then if it's the only way, it's the only way. After making a mistake, you don't just for, remain down there. You learn from those mistakes and know that life is not only about you alone. There are other people out there who are caring, who are still willing to help you further. I'll add another scenario. What do you do when it's your parents now mm. that are almost transactionally, well, I don't know how to put it, like prostituting you to blesses because the financial situation in the household is so desperate and dire. No one can actually force you to have sex with another person just because of your financial background. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of things that you could do. I mean, why must it resolve to sex though? You could open up a shop or something. Potatoes, you can grow them in your backyard. You can make chips and bread, sell it to the community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like there's a lot of things you can do. Is it sexist of us to limit being blessed to just girls? Mm -hmm. It is actually. Is it? Because there is some males that does get blessed themselves. Mm -hmm. As older women do look for compensation from younger men in exchange for compensation now. What about men from younger boys? Let's not look past that because in a, such a situation, I don't know, an uneducated individual wouldn't be able to get themselves out of that. Yeah, but I also think it starts with values. If the children from can home. just, yeah, values from home and knowing who they are. Uh. Because if they know who they are, I mean, all this transactional thing. Wouldn't be there. Yeah. It's pretty heavy, hey? Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, it's pretty heavy. Yeah. We're going to continue with our discussion shortly. I don't think it was love, though. But because he was so giving and love was supposed to be this exchange. I would say my relationship with my blesser was not the happiest. He wasn't married. He had other relationships. He would ask, why do you always want to use protection? His tone would, would change. He'd be quite aggressive. I eventually gave in to having unprotected sex with him. Though knowing that there was HIV, there was chances of being pregnant. 
but you, you want to place yourself as far away from it because you want to make this situation work right now. I found out I was HIV positive and that he had infected me in August 2007. 17 years old, HIV positive. It made me feel horrible. I felt like it was the end and I cried myself to sleep every day. So we just saw now with Zandi that her her um, her, blesser. her blesser infected her with HIV. That was one of the risks that um, she encountered. What are the, are there are there any other risks that you guys think of? Yeah, she may get pregnant after falling pregnant. He won't be there for the child because it was just sex for him, mm. nothing more. I wish there could be a way to stop blessers. Ish. Something that could be done. Mm -hmm. to teach them a lesson, to, sh to say to them, you become a blesser. Yeah. This is your consequence. This will be your punishment. This will happen to you. Mm -hmm. But I feel like as people, many women in South Africa are infected with HIV mm. more than men. Mm. Because of what? Because we are, we are not educated more about how to protect mm. ourselves. It's not about being educated. Mm -hmm. We as women, we are very ignorant. Sometimes you have to think for yourself. Mm -hmm. When someone says, come sleep with me, not using a condom, you must just think twice. Why? Mm -hmm. Then you tell that, pa that partner of yours that you are not ready and then he tells you that I'm not going to buy you anything. This guy got you a Louis Vuitton watch. Mm -hmm. He bought you original Timberlands, literally everything that you ever wanted. And he demands you have sex with him. What would you do? If I'm not ready and then you threaten me, then you can take all your, stu your stuff and walk away. Pure yes! That true. Have that your true. life that power. True. That true. Have <laughs> your life. And then after you, he takes his things, he doesn't want his things, then now he's coming at you with some threats. I'm going to beat you up. I'm going to stalk you, you know, probably burn you even. If he wants to kill me, then he can kill me. Oh, oh my god. Yeah. Yes, because like there's nothing I can do. I would never sleep with someone that I don't want to sleep with. It's either I go to someone, tell that person to give me some advice or go report it to the police that I was dating this person mm. and now he's busy threatening me. They will deal with him. And this is what we need to try to teach as LO educators, that you owe nobody nothing. You must value yourself and love yourself enough to know that you don't owe anyone sex. You can be in a relationship with someone, even if it's not a blesser, but you shouldn't uh, enter into a sexual intercourse situation because you feel you owe someone. How many of us know people that are being blessed? By I show of hands, no name dropping. Mm -hmm. <coughs> sure. Oh. <laughs> so out of, hold on, this is, a t this is like almost like a statistic, right? Mm -hmm. So we can say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Mm -hmm. Six out of seven people know a person being blessed. Learners out there are looking at us as their role models. And at some point, we disappoint them because we do nothing. Do you think our educators can help us be more disciplined with our decisions and how they teach us about the blesser culture? Do you have discussions about the blesser culture at schools with your teachers? Yes. I, yeah. not, no. Not, really. not much? Mm -hmm. Not really. Would you, would you like to? Honestly speaking, yeah. Yeah. Definitely. my LO teacher is a very, very open person. Mm -hmm. Like, we're family in that class. Mm -hmm. Everything that we speak about is on the table, hands down. Everyone's open with each other. Mm -hmm. People announce, I have a blesser, I have a blesser. Mm -hmm. Like, when we walk into that class, it's as if we've just walked home. She gives us that, that feeling of comfort in a class, openness mm -hmm. and Do you feel calmness. like you're her friend yeah. and she's your friend? Mm. Is this lacking in your teacher? Because you're saying that there's none of this at your school. Like, according to me, I wish that our teachers can teach us more about this transactional sex. Only if we knew more about it, we wouldn't do it. So I think that our teachers should be open with us because like, they're too shy or what, I don't know. Mm -hmm. When we teach them about issues, they'll be like, uh, ma'am, is this going to be in our exam? 
And if you say no, and they'll be like, so what's the point? Like, why are you teaching us? Why do we need this information? I call them the what's the point generation. Your teachers, do you know of teachers that want to have transactional sex with learners for marks? Mm. Yes. <laughs> really? Yes. Really? Yes. Oh my gosh. And <laughs> how is this being managed at school? Ma'am, it's a go under carpet. Yes. Yeah. But yeah. under carpet, you won't know, ma'am, because it happens. <laughs> yes, yeah. it does yeah. happen, ma'am. So the learners agree? Yes, ma'am. There are some learners who agree because they know that their academics are not well enough, like they are not proper. Wow. Mm. And there are some people, like there's, there are some people who come to school, they won't be in class, mm -hmm. they won't do anything task they don't submit but mm -hmm. at the end of the year they pass, pass. they pass mm -hmm. they report with flying colors yeah like, i actually know someone who used to do <clears> that <throat> and now she's learning the true consequences of her decisions what is the consequences she's pregnant with and the that teacher's teacher child yeah. doesn't even want to see her it, has she yeah. reported the teacher no she's scared but then again there's like a zero <sighs> tolerance factor for all of that there shouldn't be any sexual relationship of the kind between learner and teacher. A blesser and a blessee relationship usually and commonly refers to a relationship where one person, the blesser, is willing and able to reward the blessee for any intimacy or any sexual favors. Usually in this relationship, um, there isn't a look for a blesser, for example. It could be any person of any age, any profession, any race, any gender and usually go for people that they feel they can exert a certain level of power onto. So the power dynamics are usually skewed in favor of a blesser in this relationship, where a blessee is by default unable to negotiate for safe sex because of the way that the power dynamics are in that relationship. My name is Mpo. School is great. My teachers are fascinating. I actually love school. I had a friend who was in a relationship with a teacher, but I wasn't actually aware of that. I only found out when she discovered that she was pregnant. The teacher didn't actually want anything to do with her. She cried and cried, and in the end, she actually did an abortion, and right now she left school. You know, it's just not a good life for her. I have been proposition by an older man. And I was actually shocked when he told me that he's gonna buy me nice things if I have sex with him. And then I just told him to get off my back and then leave me alone. You have to know what you like and dislike. You have to learn how to say no when you don't want to do something. So I'm just glad that I told him where to get off because I actually want a better future for myself. What do you guys think is the way forward to overcome blesser culture? Just be happy with what you have. Don't want something that you don't have mm -hmm. because these are the things that make a person want a blesser in the first place. No matter how hard the situation is, like having a blesser and stuff like that, it's not always the option because it's not gonna be dark forever. You should know that somewhere out there, there's gonna yes. be light. Mm -hmm. So we should try yes. to promote that. And also, but firmly, we should try to like give them a warning sign to those older men that stop doing this because it's not helping anything. It's killing our children. Power to the women, my feet. Yes, get oh, your, feet. cheers to that. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, get yeah, your feet. life. Nicely done. There we go. Fantastic. Thank you so much. You guys are lovely. Love this conversation. We're going to take it up a notch. We're bringing our educators on board and uh, we're going to have a healthy conversation with them. They're watching in another room backstage. I want you to be as open with them as possible. Right? And have a dialogue with them because this is all about how we can be better together at school. Fantastic. We're joined now by our educators, as well as our sexual health expert, Dr. Tlaleng. Thank you very much for joining us. Educators, you were sitting in the room backstage. You were watching what, you know, our, our young learners have to say, and they've got a lot of things to say. What is it that you may have picked up that you would like to comment on? I could hear that learners are not doing this for fun. Mm -hmm. They are doing it just because they lack funds. Maybe at home, uh, they are living in a poor background, so that's why they are doing it. There's that situation also that's unfolding at schools where certain teachers will have sex with learners for marks. How do we remedy that? I think there is 
absolutely no focus on consequences. Like if teachers take advantage of learners like that, uh, the issue for me would be what happens to the teacher. They do it, they get away with it, and nothing happens. And, and I, I like what uh, Mem Gossi is saying, because she's mm. speaking to the structural issues or inefficiencies that enable abuse to happen. Mm. Mm. And as a reaction to that, um, we're only saying girls must stop you know, chasing after places. Girls must keep their legs closed. Mm. But no one is speaking to the adult men, which are pedophiles, mm. which are grooming young women mm. and taking advantage of their vulnerabilities. I, I want to throw it back to our educators. You spend time at school every day. What support do you need to stand strong and firm on your moral ground in how you educate the learners? We normally try by all means to talk to teachers, especially male teachers, mm. to stop what they are doing. We show them. I even showed them, most of them, that book, the booklet, which have the rules of what must we do if they continuously do that. Mm. But now, as she said, um, the learner, learners are afraid to report. Mm. So we don't get such cases. Mm. It's not like we're afraid to talk. Mm -hmm. If, for example, I go to you as my teacher and tell you, teachers would be like, Oratari Loen. Something like that, and then you'll be like, oh, let me just keep this to myself. So that's one fear as, as, as students have, that teachers might turn what we say to them against us. Mm. So that's why it's hard for us as learners to confront the teachers and talk to them and be like, ma'am, I have a certain problem concerning this and this. Like, it's hard. We need to go beyond the textbook. We really need to get out of our little cocoons. We need to get out of the box and not focus only on what the textbook offers. We need to go beyond that. You know, trust doesn't just happen. You have to work for it. In order for learners to feel free to come to you, you need to open doors for them. Mm. And you need to invite them. That's why you find that even at school, there may be many teachers, but you find that there is this particular teacher whom whenever learners are facing problem, they can just come and say, ma'am, can I see you during the air break? And I believe even with our learners here, there are those teachers at their schools. We should be friendly with them, but we should also re remember that there's always that boundary to keep between mm -hmm. a parent yeah. Yeah. and a school mm -hmm. child. It makes me think of something so important. Um, all of these qualities that the learners require from their educators, mm. where are the educators getting that from? for themselves mm. because you're giving and giving day after day um, and they're listening to a lot of stories some of them are quite traumatic some of them are quite sad and where do they go to offload mm. um, so they can refill their cup you know and keep giving again the following day so i think it's so important to have teachers who are supported debriefing sessions perhaps you know and and not just focus maybe on updates on the new curriculum or the new policy you know the guiding documents but really look at the mental health and well-being of teachers as, as well, well as custodians of all these wonderful young people mm. you know um, because you can't give what you don't have mm. um, and i think it's very important um, to be more supportive to teachers and i think from today's discussion I, I i think we'd all probably walk away with a revived sense of that rejuvenation that that that, that breath of new life into how we relate with each other better at school and spread the gospel to everybody else that it is possible to have healthy relations with your educators so as to better address you know these 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 topics of sexuality in our lives they also trust one another trust one another yes. absolutely educators young blessees need your help don't judge build the learners resilience and self-esteem remember sexual relationships with learners is a criminal offense parents Children are watching you as their role models. Learners, don't sell yourself to slay. While we understand the consequences of transactional sex, we are yet to understand the decision-making skills of our youth and their expectations in relationships. We hope today's episode helped educators and learners at home by empowering our youth with the resilience they need to overcome the obstacles. Make sure to watch another episode of Breaking the Silence next week.